Ladies and gentlemen, we'll begin in about five minutes, so if you could begin to settle down in your places, in your seats, we'll begin the, the presentation and ceremonies in about five minutes. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, esteemed guests. Welcome to the commencement exercises to celebrate the 2023 graduating class of East Point High School. My name is Lincoln Stocks. I am the president of the East Point Federation of Educators. And I wanted to go through a couple of issues that we want to make sure everybody is clear on while we're here. I wanted to take a second to recognize the fact that your group of graduates has probably had the most extraordinary experience going through high school, perhaps of anybody in American history, experiencing four different years of, of configuration of the way school goes as affected by COVID. The staff and the administration, the high school, and all the people involved in educating your kids want to thank you for the trust that you've given us in getting your kids to this point and this major milestone in their lives. So thank you for that trust. There are a couple of housekeeping items I'd like to go over with you. Many of you have been standing outside in the heat for a while. It's quite a bit nicer in here with the temperature, but if we experience any discomfort or you're not feeling well as a result of that heat, 
please step out of the space that you're in, draw attention to yourself, and we'll get somebody over there to help you and, and get you some water and get you cooled off. So if there's any problems like that, please let us know. I want to make you aware that there are restrooms to your right. Um, the first door here says restrooms B, and then in the far back, just to the side of the um, stands there, there is one that says restrooms A. You may use either one of them if you need to leave during the uh, commencement exercises um, to use the restroom. One of the things we would ask for you to do as part of the protocol of graduation is when the students enter, um, if you would please stand as they um, proceed across and through to their seats. That is one of the traditions that we like to honor and then wait for the end and when you're asked to seat, be seated, please do so. Another thing I would like you to um, consider is what an important moment this is for everybody involved and that if you would have the courtesy to stay throughout the commencement, that would be a wonderful thing. It, it feels a little disheartening for the people at the end of that alphabet um, to, to have people up and leaving and distract the, the, their families while they're um, celebrating their opportunity to walk across the stage. I want to take a second here and go through a little bit of celebration practice, if you would, please. So, item number one, if you have a cell phone, if you would please take this opportunity to silence your cell phone, we would very greatly appreciate that. I'll give you a second to pull that out and silence your cell phone so that we're not going to be disrupted by the bells, whistles, songs, banjos that will go off. The next item I'd like to draw our attention to is that we are all here to see somebody graduate. Uh, most of us are not here just for the wonderful company of the staff and students of East Point High School. We're here for a specific purpose and we want to celebrate that. And so to begin that, I'd like you to take that cell phone while it's still in your hand. I want you to point it at me and I want you to take a picture. I'll pose. We can do all that kind of stuff. If you were to really do that and take a look at that picture, you would find that the picture is probably a very small me, and I'm a very big me. The point being, you cannot take a very good picture from where you're at. So I'm going to give you a piece of advice. You don't have to take it. It's sort of like the kids do when we give them advice in class. Watch this with your own eyes. See your children, your grandchildren, your friends graduate. There is going to be a wonderful young man standing in the center there that has a camera. It's going to be streaming live. If you want to see the entire ceremony on video, you can download it at a later date from the district website. And there will be somebody here taking a picture of your child with their diploma. And that will be so much more effective and you will have the memory in your actual memory bank. It won't be something that you look at that you really can't see. And most significantly, you aren't going to be tempted to wander up to the front of the stage here or across the curtain and stand in front of somebody else that's trying to see their child graduate as well. So we please ask that you stay in your seat, that you remain seated, and that you enjoy actually watching what's going to occur tonight. So please have that courtesy and take that opportunity to see with your own eyes your children cross the stage. Quick practice. Okay, I'm a coach and so I think that practice makes permanent. It does not make perfect, it makes permanent. So we're going to practice something real quick. In a second I'm going to give a random name and you're going to celebrate as if that's your child's name. Okay, so the next graduate is Little Johnny. What do you do? Is that all you got? Give me a little bit more. You know, the next graduate's little Johnny. Last time, the next graduate is little Johnny. Let me hear what you got. Okay, so here's the deal. You guys were very well behaved. Nobody stood up. Nobody had streamers. Nobody had balloons to, to throw around. Because what I would tell you is, please don't do that. You did a pretty good job. You guys were very 
controlled. Remember, if that celebration is more than a couple of seconds long, it probably means the next child's name that's read won't be heard. And that's a tragedy for somebody that's waited for all these years to hear their child's name cross that stage and somebody forgets in their own celebration that we're here as a group. So please, respect the process. Let everybody hear their children's names. Celebrate as you do. Remain seated. If you have to pop up, I get it. Sit back down as soon as you can. You control your, your emotion. But let everybody be able to celebrate the wonderful achievements that we're here to celebrate this evening. With that said, I once again want to thank you for the trust you've given to all of us to bring your children to this significant milestone in their lives, and we are ready to get started. Congratulations.
Okay. Their ceremony is going to begin. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, honors and distinguished guests, fellow Shamrocks and members of Class of 2023. My name is Emmanuel Solomon, and as president of this class, I will be welcoming the commencement ceremony of 2023. To start the ceremony off, I would like to first thank Teacher Beck and the East Point High School Band for their fine redemption of Pump and Circus. Please welcome to the stage our classmate, Ms. Kayla Robeson, as she sings the Star Spangled Banner. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand. Okay, thank you, Kayla. Now, please welcome Mr. Jacob Mangum onto the stage so he can perform Lift Every Voice. Lift every voice and sing until earth and heaven rings, ring with the harmony of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a, a song full of the faith that the dark past has brought us. Sing a song full of the hope that the presence has taught us. Facing the rising sun of a new day begun. Let us march on till victory is won. Oh.
Thank you, Miss. Thank you, Mr. Mangum. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure now to introduce our special guests on stage. I will ask them to please rise as they are introduced. Please hold your applause until the end. Superintendent, Mrs. Christina Gibson. Assistant Superintendent, Ms. Stephanie Flemons. Assistant Principal, Ms. Fatina Thompson. Assistant Principal, Mr. Eric Sarisa. Executive Director of Business and Operation, Mr. Robert Colesso. Executive Director of Student Service, Mrs. Lori Rush. National Honor Society presenter, Mr. Alexander Edwards. Valedictorian presenter, Mr. Jonah Cram and Ms. Tiana Sanford. Guest speakers, Gwen Thomas and Mae Zhong. And Mr. J Jacob Mangum. President of Class School Board, Mr. John S. Gruenberg. Vice President, Dr. Shaniva Early. Secretary, Mr. Edward Williams. Treasurer, Mr. Robert Roscoe. Trustees, Mrs. Casey Gruenberg, Ms. Eddie Richardson, and Ms. Mary Hall Rayford. Counselors, Mr. Howard Weiner, Mrs. Erica Frederick, and Mrs. Rebecca Sarisa. Y'all can clap now. <laughs> Thank you all for your support of this course of our education in East Point Schools. It gives me great honor to announce this year's winner of the Distinguished Alumni Award this award was started with the class of 2022. A committee of seniors with the class of 2023 met and looked over the nominees of over 15 alumni candidates. We are excited to announce this year we chose Mr. Richard McDonald as the recipient of this year's Distinguished Alumni Award. Mr. McDonald graduated from East Detroit Schools in 1979. Instead of going somewhere else, he has been teaching to our school since finishing college. Known as Mac to his students, he has taught at our middle school and influenced thousands of students' lives. Many of them are here tonight. Thank you, Mr. Mac, for not only teaching us, but also being a wonderful role model. Unfortunately, Mr. Mac could not be here tonight, but we will present him with his plaque on another occasion. And now, my speech. The future holds many opportunities for us, and I believe that we should strive to achieve our dream. The challenges we have gone through in high school, such as COVID-19, pandemic, quarantine, and a hybrid schedule, have all shown us that we can overcome any obstacle that come our way. We have faced them with difficulties head on and have come out on top. The challenges we have faced have taught us variable life lessons that will help us in the college and life. We have learned to be flexible, to adapt to new challenges, and to think outside of the box. These skills will be essential when it comes to achieving our dream. We have also learned the importance of hard work and dedication. With hard work and dedication, we can reach our goals and realize our dream. We should not be afraid to take risks and make mistakes in pursuit of our dream. With the right attitude and mindset, we can learn from our failures and push forward. We shall also remember to never give up and to remain focused on our goals. With perseverance, anything is possible. I believe that we should strive to achieve our dream in the future. The challenges we have faced in the high school have provided us with the tools and skills necessary to take on our future endeavors. With hard work and dedication, we can reach our goals and realize our future. I, I would like to take a moment to thank all the staff members at our school for their hard work and dedication. Our teachers, administrations, custodians, and support staff, your efforts have not gone unnoticed. From Mrs. Jovanovsky hustling through the yearbook, Ms. Van Herens keeping the student spirits alive, Chef Shoemake making sure the students strive in their careers, Mrs. Jones for providing us with the events for the schools, Mrs. McKevick for making sure the students get the best education they can get. These are just a few examples of countless staff members who sacrifice for our success. Class of 2023, we did it. We survived a pandemic and still managed to graduate. Congratulations, class of 2023. Everybody want to know what we would have did if we did not graduate. I will guess they will never know. <laughs> now, please welcome to the podium our assistant principal, Ms. Fatina Thompson.
Thank you, Manny. Graduates, family members, and staff, it is an honor to be a part of this celebration. The 2023 graduation ceremony for East Point High School. It is such a pleasure to share in this joyous occasion that brought us here filling this Expo Center. As you who are graduating close the chapter of life's journey, this chapter, because you got many chapters ahead of you. Parents, you are probably wondering where the years have gone as you marvel at your child's accomplishments. It doesn't seem that long ago when these young adults we honor today were heading off to Head Start or kindergarten. Of course, living through those years between kindergarten and graduation may seem like forever for our students and for some of your parents too as they help you along the way and guardians as well. You are the class of 2023. You are graduating in a decade of forward-thinking innovation. You are the generation that will take us beyond our imaginations. The world is yours. I want you to remember that. The world is yours. Class of 2023, I'm excited about how each one of you will impact this world you are about to go into and make your mark. Thank you, Ms. Uh -oh. Thank you, Ms. Thompson. I would now like to introduce those graduate who receive high honors. Seniors, please stand and remain standing until all names are announced. Please hold your applause until the end. Valedictorian, Ashton Samko. Miss Rakaya Lowe. Jonah Cram. Miss Tiana Sanford. And a Salic-Dictorian, Miss Kayla Robeson. Now make some noise. Okay, and now let us welcome our classmate, Mr. Jonah Cram, to the podium. Good evening, classmates, family, friends, and staff. I am Jonah Cram, one of the valedictorians of the class of 2023. I'm People have given me many names, such as Ms. Cramson, for some reason Noah, and so far my favorite is Senior. The title Senior doesn't just mean we're in our last years of high school. It means we have survived many exciting and boring years alongside our classmates, even when we couldn't see half of them. It's actually nice seeing all these people here when I could only see 10 seniors in the beginning of the year. COVID created many, many obstacles to our education, and finally, it's been clearing up. This year has been such an upgrade from the past few years. We have had an amazing homecoming, senior pinning, and prom. We went to nice places and an ex had an extremely better time than we would have if we went to the same gym or auditorium. The graduates before us told us that our senior year would be relaxing and fun, but because it's, it's their last year of being a high schooler, which is mostly true. It is fun, but because it's our last year, people are tired of doing work. We like to call this phenomenon senioritis, and statistically everyone that I know has this and is very tough to get through. This also teaches us to have the power to get through college. Some, uh, something about me is that I have grown up in East Point community schools my whole life, and some people and I agree with me, but I love my community. Everyone makes me feel like I fit in, even if we aren't alike. Our school gives me an experience that no other school could give me. For half of a year, I have moved, and I've never felt like I belonged until I was right back here in East Point. It's most definitely one of a kind. I also know my senior year wouldn't have been the same without every single one of these graduates in front of me. I would like to thank my family for giving me this point. Thank you for everything you've provided me and guided me through. Congratulations, class of 2023.
Thank you, Jonah. Please join me in welcoming Ms. Tiana Sanford to the podium. Good evening, parents, guardians, teachers, and my fellow graduating peers. I am Tiana Sanford, a valedictorian of the class of 2023. <sighs> it is an honor to stand here today and give this farewell speech. Congratulations, everyone, for making it this far and moving on to bigger and better things. You have all done an amazing job, and I commend you all for your efforts and hard work to make it here. Understand we all had our struggles with different reasons, and so have I. Up until this day, I have kept it a secret from everyone, except my teachers and counselors, that I have high-functioning autism, also known as Asperger's syndrome. I have learned to become proud of my condition, despite the struggles I've faced, and have broken the stigma that autistic people are incapable of reaching the top. Along with this, I have anxiety and ADHD. This condition, at one time, made it too difficult for me to even step foot in school. In fact, I didn't start going to school until the fourth grade, after I was diagnosed and given medication so I can function properly. The time I spent out of school, I was homeschooled and faced loneliness and depression, and, sent, and I felt left out and like I could never fit in. I felt like there was something wrong with me. I couldn't tell you how many times I looked in the mirror and wished I was an average child. Maybe then life wouldn't be so hard. Sometimes I still feel that way. It's hard for me to interact and socialize, or sometimes focus without staring off. I faced being left out, bullied, or struggling to push forward. I never had friends, so I made the books and myself my friends. Regardless, I have strived to do my best and break out of my shell the best I could. Standing here today, I can say that I did an amazing job of not letting autism define who I am. My motto is, I may have autism, but autism does not have me. But I understand. possible for me to graduate, let alone become an honor student and valedictorian. I would like to thank all my teachers, staff, and counselors for standing by my side. I would also like to thank my parents, my teachers, my, my, I mean my parents, my biggest supporters, and the people who I owe everything to. Thank you mom and dad for being so loving and pushing me even when things got rough. I am forever grateful. Lastly, I would like to thank my grandparents who are watching me from above. Thank you all from the bottom of my heart. Because of you, I'm stronger than ever and able to move on to conquer bigger and better things, and most importantly, achieve my ever longer dream of success. I am proud to say that this fall, August 28th, I will be attending Wayne State University as a major in life sciences. Whatever career, <laughs> Whatever career I pursue, I want to help people through the power of science. I'm looking forward to conquering more challenges, meeting new people, and making new memories, but I will never forget the names and faces here at EHS, even if you and I have never interacted directly. My memories here are everlasting. My fellow peers, I hope that each and every one of you move on to shine as bright as I and so many other people know you can. Reach for the stars, Shamrocks, you're all winners. Make yourselves and families proud. God bless everyone in the class of 2023. That was beautiful, Tiana. Thank you so much. Okay. I would now like to welcome back Ms. Thompson, who will introduce us to one of our guest speakers tonight.
<laughs> Bear with me. All right. So I'm going to be um, giving you a little background about our next guest speaker, our guest speaker, Gwendolyn Denise Thomas. Gwendolyn Gwen Thomas is an American author, entrepreneur, education advocate, parent, and a Macomb County resident. In 2015, she published her first book, The Parent Smart Guide to Sending Your Kids to College Without Going Broke, Vital Scholarship Information for Students. The book was written for the purpose of educating families on the importance of 21st century college and career readiness, skilled trades, and closing the gap among segmented populations. The book is an important resource to winning scholarships to end college debt. Now, in the eighth edition, the book offers more than 1,000 scholarships from middle school to PhD, from nursing school to med school, from HBCU to Ivy League. Thomas first wrote the book based, I'm sorry, book based the success of helping her only son obtain $500,000 in direct college scholarships. The awards paid for undergraduate studies at Morehouse College, graduate school at John Hopkins School of Advanced International Studies, and study abroad to 30 countries around the world. She has now turned this work into a nonprofit organization called Fresh Perspectives Seminars, where she helps a thousand students and families annually around the world. To date, her students have won well over $20 million in, dollars in direct scholarships. Gwen Thomas goes from working with our nation's youth to meeting with corporations, foundations, politicians, civic leaders, parents, and school administrators. Her mission is discussing strategies for college preparation, benchmarks, workforce readiness, and forecasting regional labor needs. In 2010, when Ms. Thomas founded Fresh Perspective Seminars, a think tank, she never knew she would be invited to speak in person on four continents and virtually in 250 countries. Today, the organization facilitates seminars and workshops on education, workforce development, entrepreneurship, and the best practices in diversity. Ms. Thomas has worked with University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Oakland University, Morehouse College, Howard University, Wayne State, Florida A&M, the West Bloomfield School District, and others. In 2013, Gwen Thomas moved to the D.C., Maryland, Virginia area and opened a satellite office to gain stronger resources with the Department of Education and U.S. State Department and other education resources. Ms. Thomas received her undergraduate degree in political science and communications from Oakland University and her MBA from the University of Phoenix. She has served on numerous boards and community initiatives. Ms. Thomas is the recipient of numerous awards. She has been featured on ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox, Comcast News, and numerous publications like Black Enterprise, Washington Informer, Michigan Chronicle, Forbes, and more. She is a mom to one son, Cameron Thomas Schott, a member of the United States Diplomatic Corps. In her spare time, she enjoys reading, cooking when she is not busy, writing and traveling. Ms. Thomas, please come to the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, and most importantly, the incredible graduating class of East Point 2023. Give yourselves a round of applause. Today is a celebration, a day to honor your achievements, a day to embark on the next chapter of your life. As the founder of Fresh Perspectives, a nonprofit, it is my ab absolute honor and privilege to stand before you today and to share just a few words of motivation and inspiration as you step into the world beyond these hallowed halls. First and foremost, congratulations. 
Each and every one of you has worked tirelessly to reach this milestone, and you deserve to revel in the sense of accomplishment that comes with it. Graduation is a true testament to your dedication, your perseverance, and the countless sacrifices that you've made along the way. It is a mere reflection of your passion, your drive, and your ability to overcome any challenges. But let me remind you that this is just the beginning of an extraordinarily, extraordinary journey, one that will require dedication, perseverance, and more sacrifices. Today, I want to talk to you about pursuing your dreams. Dreams are what fuels your soul. It, was, it is what ignites your passions. It is what pushes you to strive for something greater in ourselves. As you embark upon your new chapter or your next chapter, I urge you to hold on to your dreams tightly and allow them to guide you in every decision. It is through the pursuit of dreams that we find true fulfillment and the meaning and purpose in your life. However, dreams alone are simply not enough. They need a solid foundation of education, of knowledge, and skills to transform them into reality. That's why your decision to pursue college and career readiness is so very crucial. College is not just a means to a degree or to a job, but it's a transformative experience that will shape your character, it will broaden your horizons, and it will empower you to make a positive impact in the world. College will expose you to new ideas, perspectives, and cultures. It will challenge your beliefs, broaden your understanding, and push you outside of your comfort zone. But I tell you, embrace those opportunities with open arms, for it is through the exploration of diverse fields of study that you will discover your true passion. You have some hidden talents that you will also find. Remember that college is not just about the grades, it's not just about earning a degree, but it's about the relationships that you will build in college, the connections that you will make, the lessons you will learn both inside and outside of the classroom. So take advantage of incredible resources that are ahead of you, from professors to mentors to internship to research opportunities. Engage in extracurricular activities, at join clubs, organizations, and make a difference in your communities. College is not a spectator sport, but it's a participatory one. While college is an incredible stepping stone for many, it is important to remember that it's not just college that's the path to success. The world is changing at an unprecedented pace, and careers of the future may not exist today. Embrace innovation, embrace entrepreneurship, and never be afraid to take the road less traveled. You see, the most successful individuals in history have often been the ones who have dared to defy convention and forge their own paths and their own journey. Moreover, as you embark Upon your journey of exploration, do not overlook the growth of opportunities that exist, that exist in the realm of skilled trades for both men and women. While college education is often emphasized, it is essential to acknowledge that some of you may discover your true passion of working with your hands, creating something tangible products that will serve our society. Skilled trades offer a diverse array of careers from carpentry to plumbing to electrical work to welding. 
but all with a 21st century orientation. Especially if you have an inclination to solve problems, a passion for creating and building, a desire to work in a dynamic and hands-on environment, these trades are not only provide a stable, a stable area, and as well as paying for jobs that are well, uh, as well as well-paying jobs, but also offer great pride in your craftsmanship. The demand for skilled trades today continues to rise as we see the development of a new infrastructure in the United States. And so just remember, graduates, success is defined by pathways truly that will ignite your passion. It will allow you to utilize your special talents and bring you fulfillment and joy, whether it's through education or whether it's through skilled trades. Embrace the path that resonates in your heart and in your soul. But amidst the excitement and uncertainty, there will be chaos in your life. But I ask you sometimes to don't think about the short side of things, think about your future and embrace the value. It is your values that will guide you, it will ground you, and it will ensure your success is built on a foundation of integrity and compassion. So stay true to yourself, be kind to others, and remember the importance of empathy and understanding. As you leave this ceremony today, you carry with you the hopes and the dreams of not just your loved ones, but in an entire generation. The world desperately needs you. It needs your fresh perspectives. It needs your innovative ideas and your unwavering determination. Do not underestimate the power that you possess to create a positive impact in our world. I have no doubt that each and every one of you can go on and accomplish remarkable things because you have already. In conclusion, my dear graduates, as you venture into the world beyond these walls, armed with your dreams to be college ready and career ready, have a willingness to explore all possibilities. Remember, the future belongs to those who dare to dream, who have the courage to pursue their dreams relentlessly. So cherish the knowledge that you've gained, the experience that you'll gain, and the friendships that you've made here at East Point. Trust in your abilities to be resilient in the face of challenge and never forget that the greatest achievements often arise from the roads less traveled. Congratulations once again and may your journey be filled with endless opportunities, immense growth, and fulfillment of your wildest dreams. I thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thompson. On behalf of the National Honor Society, I would now like to introduce Mr. Alexander Edwards. Good evening, graduates, parents, faculty, and friends that are here to celebrate this day of commencement. I am Alexander Edwards. Then National Honor Society president. I want to start this off by thinking about our past four years together in high school, how far we have all come and all the milestones we've had to endure. We all went into high school with a positive attitude to create a fun and exciting high school experience for ourselves. It was all going great until we were faced with the global shutdown and pandemic. We all had to adapt to the situation and learn how to set ourselves up for success. Whether it was learning how to navigate Google Classroom or trying to stay awake for your Google Meets, 
We all had, we all learned and were determined and focused on getting to the finish line while overcoming our own challenges. I know that from those experiences came significant qualities and skills we can use later in life. With this class, I have met some great athletes, dancers, singers, bakers, and entrepreneurs. And I know you all will do great things in your lifetime. All of us have worked hard and earned our spot to be here today by being the most hardworking, determined, and passionate Shamrocks we can be. I really do believe in the phrase, once a Shamrock, always a winner. Even though most of us are sick of hearing it over the announcements every day, you guys should believe in it too and be proud to be a part of the Shamrock community. As each and every one of you cross this stage, you should be proud of all your achievements and hard work that have gotten you here today. But most importantly, I want us all to be proud of ourselves. I want us all to hold on to the emotions and satisfaction we are feeling right now and continue to strive for these feelings throughout our lives. We may not have had the normal high school experience, but nothing in life is normal and these past years are a great example of that. Even with all the chaos going on in our lives, we still had fun throughout the years. We've had some interesting but fun homecomings and all of the different field trips during our times as high schoolers. I know for certain that COVID has taught us how to look on the bright side of situations and still have fun. I'm thankful for all the memories that we have together and I'm planning on making more in the future. I know you are all ready to get your diplomas and leave, but I wanna finish this off with a poem to remember when you reflect back on this day. This poem is called Graduation Day. Caps and gowns, tassels and smiles, a day of celebration that's been in the miles. Endless hours of work and dedication, finally paying off with the grand celebration. We've made it through the years of learning, the tests and quizzes and pages of turning. We've grown and changed and now we're ready to take on the world strong and steady. We'll move on from these hallowed halls with memories and friends that will never fall. We'll take on new challenges with pride and always remember the journey that we've tried. So let's raise a glass to the class of today and to all the memories that will never fade away. We'll cherish this moment, this day of elation and always remember our graduation. Thank you, Alex. We are lucky enough to not only have one guest speaker, but two. So Ms. Thompson, please come and introduce the next guest speaker. Thank you, Manny. Macomb County Commissioner Mai Zhong was born in a refugee camp in Thailand in 1984 to parents who belonged to the Hmong ethnic tribe. Her parents had flew war-torn Laos in the aftermath of the Vietnam War in 1987. At the age of three, May and her family were accepted into the United States. Her father found work as a machine operator and her mother took on work from home jobs like sewing to supplement the family's income. May learned how to use a sewing machine when she was 11 years old so that she could assist her mother. After graduating high school in 2003, May attended Macomb Community College and eventually went to, on to earn her Bachelor of Fine Arts from, co from the College for Creative Studies in 2007. May worked in the advertising and marketing industry for over a decade before establishing her own e-commerce business where she designed women's apparel and accessories. In 2020, May ran for office and became the first Hmong American elected official in Michigan. She is currently serving her second term, representing the residents of Warren on the Macomb County Board of Commissioners. As Commissioner, Jean led the board in appropriating $300,000 in the 2023 budget for the purchase of food for Macomb County Action's Food Pantry Distribution Program. She helped to increase funding for Turning Point, a nonprofit that supports victims and survivors of domestic violence and sexual assault. She helped secure funding for Martha T. Berry to ensure continuous care for vulnerable seniors. In 2022, May received the Tobin Fellowship and graduated from Harvard Kennedy School senior executives in state and local government and was a fellow 
of the Michigan Political Leadership Program at Michigan State University. May was recently chosen to participate in the 2023 project, K Project, an immersive program where she traveled abroad to learn about Japan's economy, society, history, culture, and politics. She is a current board member of the Macomb Food Program and a Green Michigan and adopt a role coordinator. May is married to her best friend, Adam, and together they have four children, Annabelle, Kingston, Kristen, and Ariel. Come on, May. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed faculty members, proud parents, and most importantly, the remarkable graduating class of East Point High School. I stand before you today as someone who has experienced firsthand the transformative power of education, the resilience of the human spirit, and the boundless opportunities that exist within our country. I am deeply honored to address you tonight as your esteemed guests, and I am filled with an overwhelming sense of gratitude as I recall my personal story. I'd like to thank Assistant Principal Ms. Thompson and Mrs. Sharnita Mangum for inviting me here tonight. As a former refugee whose family fled war and persecution, I came to this country with nothing but the clothes on my back. I understand the challenges and obstacles that many of you may have faced or are currently facing. I too have walked the path of uncertainty and adversity from arriving in a land where everything was different, the language, the culture, and even the system of education, to navigating my post-secondary education alone, as my father worked as a machine operator, making $6 an hour, and my mother having no higher education than the level of a kindergartner, to becoming one of the first in my family to graduate college with honors. I refuse to let any hurdles define my future. As I reflect upon my journey, I cannot help but acknowledge the stark contrast between the opportunities that I've been afforded here and the bleak reality I would have faced had I remained in a war-torn country. It is through transformative power of education that I stand here with you today, symbolizing the triumph of hope and the promise of a brighter future. Imagine a life confined to the shadows of poverty uncertainty, and violence. This was the reality that defined my early years. However, fate intervened when I was given the opportunity to come to this country, a country that embraces fundamental principles of freedom, equality, and education for all. In the United States, my family and I discovered a land that not only promised a better life, but also provided the tools to shape my own destiny. My family and I realized early on that education was the key to unlocking my potential and making a meaningful impact in the world. Each day I was reminded of the sacrifices my family made to grant me this precious gift of education. It became my responsibility to honor their sacrifice by embracing every learning opportunity, transcending language barriers, and embracing the rich cultural diversity that surrounds me. Education instills in us an unwavering belief in the power of dreams. It nurtures aspirations and expands the horizon of what we once deemed impossible. In contemplating what message I wanted to share with you today, I found myself reflecting on the diverse range of paths we can take after high school. We live in a society that often emphasizes the importance of a pursuing a four-year college degree. And while I firmly believe in the value of higher education, I want to stress the significance of exploring alternatives that can lead to equally rewarding and fulfilling careers. For some, continuing higher education may be the right path. It provides a deeper understanding of the world, expands intellectual horizons, and equips individuals with the knowledge and skills necessary to excel in their chosen field. As the late Nelson Mandela once said, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Indeed, it is through education that we can change the status quo, break down barriers, and create a brighter future for ourselves and those around us. However, let us not forget that life does not move in a linear path. 
There are numerous pathways to success, and skilled trades, apprenticeships, and post-secondary training offer invaluable opportunities for personal and professional growth. Whether you choose to become an electrician, a welder, a carpenter, or a healthcare professional, these trades and vocations are essential to the fabric of our society. They require specialized skills, dedication, and a commitment to continuous learning. As a lifelong student and a public servant, I've witnessed firsthand the immense value that individuals with technical skills bring to the workforce. These professionals not only provide stability and financial security, but they also offer a sense of fulfillment through tangible impacts they have on our community. The famous American inventor Thomas Edison once said, "Opportunity is missed by most people because it's dressed in overalls and looks like work." Embracing the skilled trades is embracing the opportunity to make a difference in the lives of others. As you embark on your personal journey, never lose sight of the importance of giving back. Throughout your life, you may have been fortunate to receive support and guidance from countless individuals who believed in you, from the teachers who encouraged you to pursue your dreams, the mentors who provided invaluable insights, to the community leaders advocating for your rights. One day, it will be your turn to pay it forward. Each and every one of you possesses the power to make a positive impact in the lives of others, regardless of the path you choose. Whether it is through volunteering, mentoring, or engaging in public service, the act of giving back not only strengthens communities but also nourishes our own souls. In the words of Maya Angelou, "If you find it in your heart to care for somebody, you will have succeeded." As you celebrate this momentous occasion, remember the life that life is filled with twists and turns and ups and downs. Embrace the power of education, whether it be through traditional higher education, skilled trades, apprenticeships, or vocational training. Strive to be lifelong learners, continually expanding your knowledge and skills. And always remember the importance of giving back, for in doing so, you will leave an indelible mark on the world. Lean on those that care about you and want to see you succeed. Your family, your teachers, and I too have full confidence in each and every one of you to achieve greatness in whatever path you choose. As you navigate the road ahead, remember that success is not measured solely by wealth or fame, but by the positive impact we have on the lives of others. Embrace the challenges, celebrate your unique journey, and let your dreams soar. For you are the embodiment of hope, resilience. And the limitless possibilities of the American dream. Congratulations, class of 2023! May your future be filled with purpose, resilience, and a relentless pursuit of excellence. Thank you. Okay, and now it's time for the presentation of diplomas. Sears, please stay. <laughs> we was waiting on this one. This one we was waiting. Sears, please stay seated until you are directed to come on stage. This is what we've been waiting for. Miss, our superintendent, Miss Gibson. Miss Gibson, all right. Our graduates, the graduates have completed all requirements to receive their diplomas. Thank you, thank you, Mrs. Thompson. I accept. Um, and extend my congratulations to the class of 2023 graduates and their families. The hassle is worth the tassel. Put your phones away, graduates, and get ready to come up and be recognized this evening. As superintendent, on behalf of the East Point Community Schools Board of Education, 
I hereby accept that the graduating class of 2023 has met their requirements set forth by the state of Michigan. And I declare that they are ready to receive their diplomas. Thank you. Emmanuel Egypt Solomon. Alexander Edwards. Tiana Charnay Sanford. Jonah Cram. Kayla Roberson. Marion R.J. Abshire. Janaya Ebony Janice Allen. <laughs> Tequila Allen. Daniel Ashraf. Desiree Annabelle Marie Bataluco. Anaya Angel Monet Banks. Shamar Banks. Tavon Baskin.
Legacy Ben. Quincy Billings. Monica Boone. Chrysan Boyd. Levon Bridges. Kamaya Bird. Nevea Cannon. Deja Carter. <laughs> Jeremiah Chambers. <laughs> Jeremiah Isaiah Chappelle. Demetrius Chase. <laughs> Bianca Clark. Kaziah Coleman McClellan. Diallo Cooper. Nina Grace Cuccinella. India Tanay Davis Pascal. Cordell Delton. Shake Diop. Jada Drake. <laughs> Brianna Andrea Dye. Mia Marie Irvin. Javeria Belafonte.
Lamontre Adams. Kennedy Edmund. Casey Fordham. Michael Caleb Foreman. Najian Tyrell Fricks. Dominique Eugene Fuller. <laughs> Anthony Garwood. Miranda Elaine Patrice Geary. Ready? Dylan Gutlaber. Kelvin Martell Harden. Lawrence Herndon. DeCarlos Henderson. Adays Henry. Janae Hildreth. Tamia Brianna Jernigan. Tamia Brianna Jernigan. Thomas Jones. Mateo Jett. Deja Monet Kellum. Jasmine Jones. Caleb Johnson. Javiana Latira Johnson Brown. Brianna Donye Knowles. Angel Nicole Coger. Matthew Robert Krim. Kimberly Willis. Kennedy. Kennedy Willis. Kaylee Koo.
Rokaya Lowe. Antoine Lovelady Powell. Jalen K. Link. Maya Manley. Akela Martin. You already know how to pronounce it. Delvon Howard Martin. Jonathan Ray Martin. <laughs> Kenneth Ryan May. <laughs> Kaylin Metcalf. <laughs> Jordan McClendon. Kayla Lynn McIntosh. Marchon Latrell Mims. Rodrigo Montgomery Jr. Charisma Morris. Alana Neal. Natuan Deshaun Nicholson. Ramon Nixon. Noah Patterson. Travion Jakari Peoples. Zaire Marquisha Pete. Vincent Burnell Person. Deshaun Phillips. <laughs> Tiffany Shanae Pippins. Kimberly Dawn Pruitt. Ariel Tanaya Rambis. Rayshawn Reeds. Miracle Richardson. Malachi Russell. Caitlin Ross. Curtis Saunders. Shalija Sanders. Chelsea Scott. Roberto John Domenico Selva. Ariana Senkis. Yeah. 
Jovan Singleton. Nakaira Sabrina Singleton. I can tell that we are slightly out of alphabetical order, so please listen carefully for your student's name. Chauncey Smith. Rayshawn Walker. Natalie Walker. Diana Sanaya Walker. Ayame Lavette Walker. Derek Wallace. Judah Truitt. Jeremy Tolbert. DeJesus Torres. Quintez Torrance. Rakaira Monique Thornton. Lamar Thomas. Kennedy Thomas. Jordan Thomas. Kaylin R. Derek William Souther. Ashton Robert Stone Sopko. Imari York. Brianna Nicole Spalsbury. Ariana Deshawn Wims. Michaela Williams. Brenila Janae Willis. Natasia Williams. Jordan Williams. Imani Williams. Dalea Danae Williams. Taylor Wiley Jones. Nazir Wiley. Santana Wheeler. Naham Wellens. Maya Desiree Watkins. Dana Watson.
Antoine Washington. Aiden Warren. Lane Thank you for that. Thank you, Ms. Thompson. At this time, I invite all the new graduates to rise and join me in thanking the people that may help us get this far. We will be thanking our parents, families, friends, and educators. Get up. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Now please be seated. Okay, guesses. Before the graduates are dismissed, please remember to remain seated as they exit. The graduates will be going to the auxiliary gym to pick up their diplomas. Seniors will march out together. All guests must go out to the sports expos after the graduates who will then meet their outside. Thank you for being with us on our graduation day. Seniors, do not move until you are dismissed to leave your rows. Y'all hear me good? Make some noise! Okay, now please, please be seated while the graduates are getting dismissed. Dismissed. Huh? Oh. Thank you all for showing up. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day.